brighten up your color film and try something new, then this video is for you. We're here in my kitchen and we're going to cook up some film soup. So in order to make film soup, we're going to start with some film. Now you can do this either before you've shot the film or you can do this after you've shot the film. Personally, I like to do it after I've shot the film because it means that when I go ahead and put all the stuff in it, the stuff is not going to get through my camera somehow when I try and shoot the roll of film. The first time I tried this, I definitely did the souping first and then put it through my camera. It was fine, but if you do want to do the souping before you shoot it, I highly recommend that you go ahead and let the film dry out after you've souped it for a minimum of two weeks just to make sure that it's extra dry, that you don't get a bunch of gunky, crusty stuff going through your camera. When it comes to film soup, this is a process I really enjoy. I mean, no two pictures are ever the same. And for all of you perfectionists out there, this is a process that you really have to embrace the unpredictability, the fact that you can't control the results. And then basically your kitchen cabinets or your cleaning supplies are the limit when it comes to what you can use to soup your film. Now, if you are mixing all of your chemicals together, just be sure that you're really careful about um, wearing gloves if you need to, if you have any bleach or anything that you don't get it all over your clothes or in your eye, and also be careful what you mix together because we don't wanna create something that's going to poison our lungs and what have you, so just make, make sure that whatever it is you decide to use, it's not going to create some kind of crazy chemical reaction. So to get started, all you really need is your container. You can open this up like this. You can put your film inside. So first of all, we're gonna try a little bit of red wine. The truth is, this has been sitting in my cabinet since the last time I souped film. So it might be a couple of months old and uh, I guess we'll see what happens. I guess it's gonna be a little bit more vinegary and acidic when it comes to the results on this film. So we're gonna put some red wine in here like this. I don't know, just as much as you feel like. And we're gonna put a little bit of lemon juice. I always feel like the lemon juice is super important because like I said, the more acid you have, the more crazy the results get. So a little bit of lemon juice here and some salt. And let's add a little dish soap. Put a little bit of vinegar in it. Why not? Okay. And you really only have to put like enough soup to really just cover the foam. That's fine. You don't really need to go overboard with this. By the way, guys, I didn't mention this, but I, I guess I should. Um, black and white foam does not work for this process because it's going to look black and white. I also usually like to write down what exactly I put in it so that I will not forget in case I really like the formula and I want to use it again. Oh, and I nearly forgot the hot water. I put hot water in almost all my film soup recipes, but really just because I have this idea that the temperature of the hot water mixed with the other chemicals kind of accelerates the process and gives you even more crazy results. I put the lid on top of it like this, make sure it's really secure because I don't want to get red wine all over my beautiful shirt here. Yeah, you can test it. Probably a good idea to test it just before you start shaking it up. Okay, so we're gonna put the timer on a little bit here. You really like 10 to 15 minutes, you should just like agitate it. Sometimes like as you're shaking it, you'll start to see little particles and stuff come out. That's normal, so don't freak out if you see something like that. Now, once you're done with shaking your film and agitating it, you just wanna let it sit. Usually I do it overnight. So I'll do it in the evening, I'll shake it all up, I'll get it ready and I'll let it sit and then when I wake up in the morning, I'll dump it and I will wash it. And we're back. So this film has been sitting here for about 12 hours now. We're gonna go ahead and dump out all the chemicals and give it a really, really good wash for at least 15 minutes or so, just to make sure that we've gotten a lot of that uh, chemicals and stuff all out of the film before we go ahead and let it dry or develop it ourselves. <laughs> the film you have two options as far as development goes 
One is you can go ahead and develop it at home with your own C41 chemicals. This is by far the fastest option and gives you the most control over the results as well. By the way, if you want to know more about how to develop your own color film, be on the lookout. I will be posting very soon another video all about that so you can check that out. The other option is to go ahead and send it off to a lab. Now, if you decide to go ahead and send it off to a lab, it's really important to make sure that you've informed the lab that you have a soup to film. Not all labs will take it. I know Photo Impacts here in Berlin is really good about it. Uh, they just want you to tell them first because usually what happens is they will wait until the end of their chemicals to go ahead and run the film through. They have no idea what you've put in it and they want to make sure that whatever is in there is not going to contaminate other people's pictures and film as well. So that's why you have to have a little bit of patience. Sometimes they will wait till the end of the batch so it can take a couple extra days to get your pictures back. But if you can find a good film lab that will do it, they can do a good job with that. Also, if you are sending it off to the lab, just make sure that you let it dry out for a minimum of two weeks before you send it off to them. It's really important just to make sure that all the chemicals get washed off properly, that the stuff dries properly on the film and settles so they're not dealing with a big, goopy, disgusting mess in the end. In this video, of course, we are going to skip the development process and go right to the results. Before we do that, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think of these pictures in the comments below.